In this lesson, we'll explore how to write data. Data writes can be parallelized by changing the number of partitions of our data. This means that our writes will be faster, and when we read from that data, we can read them in parallel as well. By the end of this lesson, you will have written to a target database in both serial and in parallel. In this lesson, we're going to look at writing data. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about partitions, which control the writes that we have to a target database. Then we're going to control these partitions using the repartition and coalesce hints. This syntax is going to look a little bit different from what you've seen before. So let's start by running our classroom setup script. I'm going to go ahead and attach to my cluster. Now let's talk a little bit about partitions. So due to Spark's distributed nature, database writes work a little bit different from what you've seen in the past. Now, a partition is a portion of our total data set. Recall that when we interact with data frames, in reality, our data is distributed across the cluster. It's not just all sitting together. So partitions are one of these portions of our data set. When we write to a target database, we're going to have one connection for each of the different partitions that we have. And so this is the main way that we control parallelism with our writes from Spark. Let's take a look at how that works. First, let's go ahead and import our data set. Now, in order to actually write data, we are going to have to dip down into Python. You can use this as boilerplate code and just fill this in with your own paths as needed. So I can use this SQL function within Python and just pass in my SQL query. That'll allow me to transition from a SQL environment into the Python environment. Here, I just define this variable df, and then I go ahead and display it. This confirms that we have our data. Now, in order to do a write, I can use this dot write method on our data frame. I usually want to use this mode overwrite. That way, if I already wrote data, it's going to overwrite whatever's there. And then I can pass it a path. So this path is just the destination of where I'm going to write that file. And here I have this variable username. This just makes sure that I write to a unique path. That way, if I'm sharing my workspace with other students, I'm not going to overwrite their data. Now let's take a look at the file we just wrote. So as you can see, the path now has my username, and then it has firecalls.csv. But note that this is a directory. This isn't just one single file. So here I have some metadata. These three underscore files are just giving me a little bit of information on whether or not my write was successful um, and different stages of the write as well. I also now have my data divided into these different parts. So you can see that it goes from part zero up to part seven. So that means I had eight different partitions that I was writing to. So I have eight different partitions in my data. Spark was creating a connection to my target database. In this case, this is S3 and it connected and it wrote all eight of those files. Now, if we want to get a sense for how many partitions I have, I can use this .rdd.getNumPartitions command. And this confirms that I have eight partitions in my data. Now, when we control this concurrency, we have two different options. One is called coalesce, and the other is called repartition. The syntax is right here. The difference between coalesce and repartition has to do with the type of transformation that it is, and also whether or not it evenly distributes our data. In the case of coalesce, it's a narrow transformation, so I'm not shuffling my data across the cluster when I use it. In the case of repartition, it is a wide transformation, so I will transfer data across the cluster. I'll also make sure that I have the same amount of data in each of my partitions when I use repartition. This is not the same for coalesce. So regardless of what data source I'm connecting to, whether that's S3 or maybe a database using JDBC, these partitions determine how many of those connections I'm making at a given time. Now, let's take a look at how this works. So you can see here that I pass in this coalesce hint. And so this looks just like a SQL comment, but in reality, Spark is going to use this to change the number of partitions that I'm working with. Now, if I take a look at it here, it shows that I have one single partition. 
Now, if I want to repartition instead and add eight different partitions, I can do that here. And I can confirm that this worked by looking at the number of partitions again. I can easily change this. I can turn this up to 12. And now I have 12 different partitions. Now let's go ahead and save the results. So I can click these arrows here and I can take a look at the number of concurrent writes that I had. Here you see I have 12 different tasks. This means that I had one task for a write for each of my partitions. Recall that we switched the number of partitions from 8 to 12 here. Now if I want to confirm that that worked, we can take a look at this file and I should have 12 different parts of my file here. It looks like that's accurate. So just to sum up, you can alter the number of concurrent writes that you're making using these coalesce and repartition hints. It's worth noting that coalesce means something a little bit different in ANSI SQL. So in ANSI SQL, what coalesce means is to return the first non-null value. And so the term coalesce might be a little bit confusing in this case. But when we use it like this, what we're actually determining is the number of distinct partitions of our data we have. Now when Spark does these writes, they might look like normal CSV or Parquet files. But in reality, they're directories that contain a number of different parts of our data.